Now, these three styles are the major styles used worldwide. Uh, the style here on the left is all about cartoony styles, really basic, simple cartoon characters. Uh, what I mean by that is, uh, if you look at the shape of his head, it's very squarish, cube or box type um, head shape, a triangular nose and stuff. Very simple and easy to do. Uh, these type of characters are used for uh, things like uh, TV series like for Boomerang or Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, stuff like that. If you go all the way here to the right hand side, this more realistic type character, um, if you see this face, is, yes it's a cartoon but it has you know realistic features. Uh, which companies usually concentrate on this style? Uh, I would say you know Marvel comic books or DC comic books, anime uh, books or animation cartoons and stuff. Uh, but we're going to be focusing on the middle guy here. Now, this guy has a taste of both worlds here. What do I mean by that? Well, basically, he has all the realistic features of a male character, but it's exaggerated towards the cartoony side. And who uses these type of characters? Well, Warner Brothers does, DreamWorks, Disney, Pixar. Don Bluth uses this for his animation studios and stuff. These are the most popular style characters and successful type characters worldwide. So our course is going to be based on this style of characters. So uh, before I kick off, I just want to tell you a couple of tips here. What features do you need to exaggerate? Okay, you need to understand this uh, on a character, on a male character, to make him, you know, to change his face around. Well, basically, the nose is the center point of the face. Whatever happens to this nose, whether you make it tiny or bigger or I don't know, okay, huge up to you. Uh, whatever you change on the nose changes the whole face. Have that in mind guys. The ears also. If I give him bigger ears it will change his face. Uh, the jaw, the head shape. Okay, These three things, the nose, ears and the jaw, the head shape all together. Uh, even the eyes. Those features, if you know how to exaggerate them properly whether to, you know, even for eyes, there are like many different styles of eyes. You're going to be going for this now. Then you can create many, many, many male characters. So in the next stage, we're going to be learning how to create our library of features that we're going to exaggerate. So I'll see you guys on the other side. Okay, how to do eyes. Now, we're going to be covering how to do the basic eye shapes, which I'm going to do right now. And from those basic eye shapes, we're going to be covering different styles, okay? Now, these are the basic shapes. You've got the basic circle of an eye. Um, you've got an oval shape that could be either horizontal, um, vertical or it can be slightly slanted like that one. Then you have the oval shape, which is horizontal. These three styles of eye shapes are used everywhere. The only difference is they might just tweak it around a bit, but it's related to these three basic shapes. Now... We're going to be starting off by doing some kind of um, a the hero's eyes, okay? So an eye of a hero, the good guy of the show, okay? So I'm going to start off with a nice oval horizontal shape, okay? So I'm just going to draw the basic oval shape. And obviously um, they have, you know, eyelashes. So from here, the inner edge of the eye, curve up and then go straight across like this. And then from the edge, come down a bit like that. Um, and the same from the bottom just go all the way around and complete it keep it nice and rough guys all right keep it rough don't bother going really clean and tidy these lines here I'm just going to emphasize the upper lid all right now here I'm also adding a little uh, crease mark which which emphasizes the lower parts of the lower lid uh, we all have that even men and women now let me just quickly draw a quick uh, pupil in the middle here in an iris you know and make it dark in the middle like that have a little shine and a few texture rendering marks just to give it some value to make it more realistic now you can see this eye is nice and soft okay um, you, you can really get attached to this character's eyes already um, doesn't put you off it's not an evil character it's nice and soft okay remember those words they're soft and it's hard all right uh, the hard ones are usually the evil ones or even if a hero has a hard eye it's because he's either angry or something. Now in each eye you need an eyebrow. The eyebrow together with the eye gives the expression. Now when it comes to drawing male characters I love giving the characters thick eyebrows like this. The reason I give thick eyebrows is there's a very thin line between female characters and male characters. Um, some features on the face if you don't do it correctly 
it might look a touch feminine instead of masculine okay so the the audience might have to think twice whether this is a female character or a male character when it comes to drawing cartoons so giving a thick eyebrow like this um, automatically uh, tells the audience yes this is a guy okay obviously you can see it's a guy um, wrinkle marks around the eye uh, gives depth and it makes sense to the audience all right now let me make a nice big uh, profile version of the of a person's head quickly rough sketch I'm just gonna quickly do a side profile view here of a guy um, don't be bothered about how I'm drawing the side view. I'm just gonna quickly just add a couple features here and nose and a forehead now I draw a line diagonally up through the nostrils all the way to the center of the head and from the forehead down to the head okay now this triangular area is is the area that defines where the eye is gonna be it doesn't have to be exactly correct it might be wrong I might be I might draw the space might be too big it could be too small but the main point is it gives me an estimation of roughly where I can place the eye okay and this is not bad positioning um, maybe the eye might be a bit too big here that I've done it but it, I can get away with it and I just draw a triangular shape basically and just uh, add the eye in and stuff like that there's the eyelid the eyelashes and here I'm gonna add the the eyebrow and um, once again keep it nice and thick the eyebrow um, I'm flaking at the front of the eyebrow you can see some flaky uh, you know hair there so hair strands um, you know guys have messy eyebrows okay we're not as fine and clean as women have their eyebrows so that's the reason I do that sometimes I don't but I usually do that especially on an evil character now um, <clears throat> drawing a library of eyes is very important I'm gonna be going on a little bit more about the library and the reasons for having a library at the end of the of this section here so you can understand more why we do the library okay let me just add the nostrils here and a bit of the, the bottom lip somehow I'll put the bottom lip here okay so that's what the eye will look like from the side now uh, this type of eyes are more realistic than cartoony okay but we will be covering a few different more styles of eyes this is just an example of what kind of eye you can add to your character and it's good to have many different types of eyes I, I only usually use about three four styles of eyes this is a oval shape but this time it's longer than the actual original one I did first okay if you notice the difference the, the first eye I did was bit more towards a circle this one's longer and I'm emphasizing the lower part of the eye bringing out the eyelashes more okay so as I'm doing this darkening up the eyelashes don't give you know hair strands on the eyelashes like you do on girl characters just keep it just a thick line so the audience knows that's an eyelash there the eyelashes you know and the eyelid on top and just quickly add the circle in just to show you what it would look like uh, when it had the pupil and the iris in the middle now the only difference between this eye and the ones before is is that I just stretched it a bit so this is a technique that a lot of us use we might have a basic shape and just by tweaking it you have a different eye okay but really it's the same eye so you can either squash it even more you can stretch it upwards or downwards you can do whatever you want with the eye to form a different eye okay but um, basically these are these three right now are practically the same more or less the same so this is one style of an eye look at now what I'm gonna do with the eyebrow I'm, I'm stretching it even more than before slightly thinner and lower okay automatically by positioning the eyebrow like that I've changed the expression already to the character the other ones were you know a little bit higher apart from the from the eyeball this time I brought it lower I've stretched it even longer because some guys have longer eyebrows a little bit thinner as well don't make it too thick if it's gonna be really long um, but yeah that's what that's what happens when you modify a feature when you exaggerate a feature to form different expressions at the same time now let's do another one here how about if I'm looking up towards him once again I'm doing an oval circular shape this time imagine the camera is looking up towards the face okay so we're looking up towards the eye so obviously I'm gonna give the the eyeball a shape like a like a moon shape sort of thing like half a circle semicircle sort of thing because that's what our eyes look like when you look up at it and um, once always add the crease lines in there <clears throat> pardon me um, 
I'm going to try and make him look like he's either concentrating on something or he's a little bit, you know, um, either in distress or something like that. If you notice, the, eye, the pupil is a little bit smaller. Add the eyelids always, okay, on top or and on the bottom. On the bottom, to emphasize it, is the crease lines, okay? On top, you have to actually draw the lines going across like that. Let me just, you know, clean this up a bit for you guys to understand. But keep it nice and rough, okay? This is not going to be a final um, image that you're going to show to, you, I don't know, your customer or something. This is just a quick sketch. Uh, the eyebrow comes round this time. Um, it's like I'm looking, <coughs> pardon me, underneath the eyebrow. So obviously, there's going to be a shadow there as well. So I always add value to my sketches, even though they're rough, just so I can understand if it works. And so that's what, that's what it would look like if it was on top. Now, remember, these eyes are for the hero of the story, <clears throat> the good guy of the story. Uh, this wouldn't work on an evil guy. So um, you might get away with it sometimes, but nah, this is mainly for the hero. They're all soft eyes. They're eyes that you can actually um, feel safe around when you're looking at it. You understand it's a hero. So how about another one? Let's do a, an actual shocking. Shall we do a shocking one? Let's do a shocking one. To do a shocking one, make sure the pupil and the iris are more or less away from the edges like now can you see the rest of the eyes the the pupil and the iris are touching the edges of the eye where the eyelashes are and stuff this one however is going to be a part it's going to be it's going to, you're going to see the white the white color of the eyeball around it uh, this automatically um gives the idea of of a character either being scared or something or he's surprised or shocked or you know that kind of an impression, that kind of an expression. Um, raise the eyebrow higher, always. Always raise the eyebrow higher to give that shocking expression. Um, I'm adding a bit of value on the eyeball itself. That's just for me that, let's say I decide to to clean this up and use it for, I don't know, for later on or something. That uh, The reason I put a shade on the eyeball is just to let me know, hey, uh, make sure you add uh, a bit of a shade there when you color it. Anyway, so, I'm going to raise the eyebrow higher than normal. Look how high I'm going to do this. Watch this. Like that. And a lot of skin between the eyebrow and the eye. And I curved it down as well. A little bit too extreme, but I did curve it as a... I exaggerate it so you can make sure you give that impression to the audience. And just shade that in, obviously. Uh, male characters. Every man, well, nearly every man. The forehead comes out a bit. It's not like women who have more subtle foreheads. And uh, because our foreheads are bigger than a woman's, we make a little shadow under our eyes as well. So uh, have that in mind as well. Okay, this is section one of the eyes. Let's put it here to the side. These are the hero's eyes. You'll be able to find the final image in the folder of the images of this course. So you can actually look at it and study it. Now... Let's draw some evil character eyes, yeah? Uh, so, like I said before, I don't have a huge library of eyes. I have the ones that, I'm, that I like myself, in my opinion, that I think is my favorite. So these are the basic shapes that, you know, that I use, basically, for, let's say, an angry uh, villain. And what I do is, I just draw a line on the bottom and make a semicircle on top. Or vice versa, a line on top like that, and the semicircle underneath. Obviously, the, this one here you can tell it's a you know an ordinary character that's always angry. Or I just you know keep the whole circle and use the eyebrows to do the talking for you. Let me explain what that means. Well, I'm going to add quickly some basic pupils there. I don't usually add um, detail to the pupil and the iris like I did on the hero. I keep like a dark, dark, you know, round circle for the people in the iris. And just by adding some quick eyebrows, on the evil guy, you can put thin eyebrows and you can put thick because skinny and slim and slithery and sly, you know, all those S words, <laughs> okay, they, um, they really go well with an evil character. All right, you can have a big, a big, tough guy as well as a bad guy, but as you've seen in many movies, the skinny creepy tall lanky character for like example like in Aladdin the you know Jafar 
okay or um, who, who else do we have that I remember on the top of my head for example how about have you seen Ratatouille the the bad guy the villain there that skinny creepy you know that gives you know is a perfect style character for evil characters which goes really well for this project I will be using a really skinny character for the bad guy now upper lids and lower lids very very important that you emphasize it even for the hero but a lot for the evil character because you can really add detail to those lids as well on an evil guy you can make him look really ugly and get away with it because you can get away with it because he's evil he's a villain now um, let's say uh, how about we put let's try this shape here now this shape is also uh, an obvious shape um, I'm gonna draw a, a half open eye so I'm gonna basically draw the line really low for the eyelashes and the bottom lash there as well and just poke the eye the, pu the pupil and the iris from under the lid this is the expression with a nice raised eyebrow going round like that this is the typical expression where the evil character is not really bothered about what you're saying or he's so full of himself you know that proud snobbish look or the sly look you know um, this is a, a very specific eye shape that even Tex Avery and Chuck Jones used used a lot in their cartoons okay this is where I learned it from uh, as a child up to right now I've always been studying these artists and what they used and this eyebrow this eyebrow and eyeball together with this expression was used throughout all their history so um, it's really easy to do you just saw what I just did I just added you know uh, an eyelash for the middle and that's it and the little eye pupil poking out um, this I use a lot on my evil characters you can also even use it on the hero maybe so I can add the other one next to it or will I spoil it I think is it I don't want to confuse you so I want to keep it as one eye but um, yeah that's what I would use for the majority of the time the majority of the time on my characters that are evil but you can use it also on a hero as well now if I squash the eye even more okay like this and poke it underneath like that the, the pupil and uh, I, I don't know put the eyelashes on the bottom as well like this okay and add the wrinkle marks to emphasize the bottom part of the lid if you touch your eyeball underneath your bottom eyelashes you can feel your eyeball in your skin so that's what that, what that means and it's really pressed down the eyebrow so it gives an evil really evil look you can also do this with the hero when he's angry okay but um, really exaggerate it on the evil character because that's where the fun begins uh, you gotta make him as scary as possible when it comes to uh, the audience reading it so they can fear this character and you know you know uh, cheer on the hero to go and save the day so um, let me rip, I don't like that nice let me keep it simple so I won't confuse you so these are the th I'm, what I'm doing now is creating different shapes uh, exaggerating, exaggerating different positionings so that I can form a huge library of eyes and expressions okay now at the end of this whole course we should have many many libraries on features so that when it comes down to uh, designing a character and you can't think of anything at the moment you have it ready for you as a reference now obviously you might know a few other shapes that you like you know add it to the library I do I have this something similar to this already printed out on my wall in front of me so this is the evil eyes okay and I'll talk about the library at the end of this session and then we'll I'll explain to you in more detail why we use this and here we have the hero's eyes now I also have a set for the dorky eyes which is my favorite eyes I love the dorky eyes um, let me explain let me show you what I mean hold on first let me talk about the positionings okay what I mean by positionings um, you can have a shape okay and if you change the positioning of the eyeballs together the two eyes you have a different face okay so if you had a character that you're familiar with if you move around the eye shape positions you're gonna change his face altogether and have a complete different character for example let's say this little this is the Garfield positionings that's what I call them now if you did this this is wrong okay so don't do that that's wrong okay what you will do is the outer this one stays the same the outer one squashes even more 
okay so it looks like it's going round the face okay so that's a nice positioning you've seen me do that on some other cartoon characters and how about if I squash one and have one like that so it gives it more of that ridiculous funny look okay you've seen that everywhere um, has some eyebrows here and there what else how about the good old Ed Ed and Eddie eyes <laughs> you've all seen Ed Ed and Eddie well this is what their positionings were like something like this far apart you've seen that on many cartoons um, let me think of something else even if you do the same thing but smaller it changes the face M modifying the positioning and the size of the eyeball that's the idea okay so play around with that okay um, I could go on forever doing positionings which will bore you to death so I'm, I'm just giving you this as an example so you know what I'm talking about well, so when you're designing um, go for it actually play around with the positioning before you start adding real detail and if you're happy with one keep it and that's going to be your character that you're going to start you know um, you're going to start developing okay so I mean I like I like putting these lines of where to categorize everything now the dorky eyes is that how you spell dorky I'm not sure if that's how you spell dorky but you get the point now the dorky eyes these are my favorite it's so much fun doing dorky eyes because it's so ridiculous so I usually use a circle type shape and I might modify it a bit I might even use the oval shapes and I only use a dot like that for the pupil or the iris and stuff yeah I don't go into detail you it will you don't you don't want it to be as human as possible it has to be funny and dorky humorous um, the eyebrow um, I just emphasize a little bit more the eyelashes there so you know on top the upper eyelid and those crease marks emphasize the bottom eyelid now this is just a basic uh, shape here yeah so let me just quickly add the nice nose there funny funny nose just for just for the sake of it now the nose and the stuff is not part of this session here it's just the eyes so concentrate just on the eyes another one here that it's like it's looking is like he's looking at his nose okay so it looks kind of funny already you can see the difference between between the hero and the evil guy okay so he looks like a funny humorous character this character is good for like you know the sidekicks of the show the funny guy in the picture yeah um, let me quickly just put this out of the way let me put it there okay make some room here now let's start by drawing how about uh, let me draw another one here and uh, let me add uh, let me think let me think let me think okay I'm gonna do a half open one on this one as well I'm gonna try and copy the other guy over there so I'm gonna add another one in a sec hold on the, you always have to add the eyebrows as a nice expression to go together if you have it not there you cannot really fully see your character now you can choose whether having a thick eyebrow or a thin one when it comes to dorky characters you can get away with it but um, I, I really advise you to have you know thick eyebrows how about the good old Garfield shape eyes this is how Garfield is very famous for his eyes pupils there really stretch open eyes at the bottom lashes and the top lashes like that and uh, you see the crease marks basically the eyes overlap that's the whole point of this and the eyebrows on top like that see I did thin eyebrows and you can still get away with it because he's dorky now um, if I add a nose or shall I not add a nose let me think shall I keep it simple let me keep it simple all right look at that already it's funny it's hilarious now this time let's add another one here another one here he's looking towards us a little bit bigger the dots now for the pupil and the iris and this is a most common shape eyes that you see in comic books in you know in the the, the slapstick comic books you know like um, for example the ones you see in a newspaper or something uh, the good old wonky eyes that join together in the middle and stuff like that uh, these are for me the most fun style of eyes to do so uh, that's all I, that's all you gotta do is just fill it up with different eyes okay I have a sheet on, on in front of me on the on the wall that's what I'm looking at right now actually and trying to copy it for you guys and um, I have over I don't know I haven't counted them but there must be over a hundred eyes here and it's, it's basically these three categories but they are different positionings, different shape, different types of expressions and stuff. I've got so many that you should be adding to. 
but these are your basics all right and in your own time I want you to modify it add extra and slowly slowly you have a huge library of eye sets now how about if I do it like this squash the outer eye a little bit more apart than normal give the eyelashes on top and on the bottom just like this okay what I'm doing is just drawing the lines here I hope I'm going at a good pace for you guys this is a nice pace I reckon and the eyebrows over the top like that wrinkle marks and the bottom the top um, eyelids like that and let me add another brow here as well the line that goes down if you saw me stroke a line down from the eyebrow it's just to tell me yeah this is where it should you know connect to the eye sort of thing so I can line it up basically and add the shadows I always add the shadows when I'm sketching okay because it makes it look more alive than you know a plain sketch flat sketch try and avoid the flat sketches guys really go messy add values it really brings it more to life um, okay let's see should we do another one let's do one more why not how about um, this line here this is what I do I do like a directional line telling me this is where the eyebrow is going to be and I'm just going to add let's say two random shapes here like this and I based it around the eyebrow direction and now what I'm going to do is after I add these lids here and and here like that what I'm going to do now is going to fill in the eyebrows but I'm, all I got to do is follow the line so this is a little technique I do use a lot okay let me bring this a little bit more exaggerate it like that so it's good to do directional lines really cool directional lines of the way you want your eyebrow to be and you could base around the eyes around that directional line and then just add the eyebrows really simple so I have to do for example let's say I add two shapes uh, here like that let me just quickly add the pupils in like this now I'm gonna add this directional line now okay all I gotta do is just follow that with the eyebrows so you can either do it before or after okay doesn't matter same thing um, it just you just the directional line just tells you hey this works okay but do it this way if I do the lines going like that you know it works perfectly and then you follow it on with the with the eyebrows I hope that makes sense to you uh, you'll see later on when we start drawing the heads okay when I start drawing the heads I will be using that technique so I think that's okay now um, yeah that looks kind of cool to me let me think of if I could uh, draw you know, one more here like this and uh, give a nice little angry angry look and uh, just draw the eyeballs underneath like this half a circle add the pupils and that's it so that's how that's how simple it is to quickly draw the eyes for the hum for the dorky guy the dorky guy is so quick and easy to do you can do many pictures or, or animated still frames with this character so um, that comes to the end of this little session now let me tell you a little bit more about why we create this library okay what have we done so far basically what we've done so far is we've um, we've learned how to uh, make a quick library of eyes in different styles shapes positionings and stuff okay now the reason why we do this not just for the eyes but the other things that we're going to be exaggerating which is the nose the eyes the nose the ears and the head shapes plus the jaw which includes the chin okay those features are the ones you exaggerate okay the main ones you really exaggerate and I re-emphasize this is the nose and the ears okay those and the jaw those three more than the eyes okay because the nose is a center feature of the face now if you make it a gigantic nose they're gonna notice it okay if you make it really tiny they're gonna notice something else they're not gonna notice the nose they're gonna, they're gonna notice the ears or something okay so because it's in the center of the nose now depending on what you do with it 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 will change what the viewer is gonna see okay how it's gonna see the character so if I do those the dorky characters for example and I put a massive nose okay like have you seen Gonzo from the you know is it the Muppets okay uh, Gonzo has a massive nose that's his characteristic and it's the first thing you will see when you see him now if he didn't have that nose you probably will notice the eyes or something okay so the nose is the centerpiece of the picture so anyway before we all start um, creating and designing characters as an artist you need to have first of all an idea in your head of what your character is gonna be all about 
once you know you need to have you have to decide what type of eyes do I give him what type of nose what type of ears okay now if you're not experienced and when I mean experienced I mean like let's say all these eyes I've drawn now for you guys I already have it memorized in my head so I don't really need to see this okay because I've been doing this for like years but um, if I never had a good memory and I need to, to quickly look back and find an idea I'll just go through my, my library of uh, features it's like a reference sheet okay so um, you have it on your wall or you print it out in a folder or something and you look at it and say okay this this set of eyes goes perfectly with my character and that's how it, that's how it works so the more eyes you add the more noses you add and all those features to your library the more easier life gets when you start designing a character okay so that's what the library is all about and the more you do it the more you practice the more you draw the more easy it is to memorize it without looking okay uh, I still have it on my wall I might look at it to see if I can see an expression that I couldn't remember or something but the styles I haven't forgotten them I'll always will remember them okay the more you do it you'll remember it and plus your your drawing techniques get better as well the more you do these things so um, yep that's wraps this up so I'll see you on the next part which will be the nose I'll see you guys in a bit <laughs>